Hello everyone, my name is Dr. David Pugh. I am a staff scientist at the Calst Visualization Core Laboratory. And today I'm going to continue a series of videos where I show uh, new users how to get started with a PyTorch data science project on IBEX. In particular, uh, this video uh, picks up where we had a previous video left off that showed you how to uh, clone our template repo, um, create a new project on IBEX from that template repo, create a conda environment uh, for that project that would support PyTorch with GPU acceleration and had a whole bunch of, of other interesting libraries. So I'll put a link uh, in this video to that previous video. If you haven't watched that previous video, it's important that you, you kind of sit through that and understand how to um, get the project code down onto IBEX and how to create your conda environment, things like that. This video is going to show you how to launch a Jupyter server with um, access to a GPU so that you can kind of develop and prototype your new PyTorch project before launching larger scale uh, jobs on as batch jobs on IBEX. Okay, so here we go. So uh, again, in that previous video, I, I walked you through the process of using this PyTorch GPU data science template project to create a template um, on your own GitHub account, clone that repo down, and then create the conda environment um, that is described in the configuration files in this repo. So this video is gonna pick up where that previous video left off, and we're going to walk you through the process of launching a Jupyter server uh, with access to a GPU. So first, you know, here I'm logged into IBEX, I've changed into my PyTorch GPU data science project directory, and if I list the contents, you can see that I have all of the same files that are available um, in the, the online version on GitHub. And also you should have an EMV directory. So the EMV directory is your conda environment and that conda environment, we covered how to create that in a previous video. So that's important. So if you don't have that EMV directory there, you're not ready to start uh, with this video. Okay, but let's assume that you are ready to start. You do have your conda environment built and ready to go. So now we wanna launch a Jupyter Notebook server uh, or Jupyter Lab server. So in the bin directory, uh, there are, uh, there's both a readme file that explains uh, how to do this. Um, and starting from here, so launching a Jupyter server for interactive work. So it's a, uh, a multi-step process. So I'm gonna walk, walk you through it uh, slowly. Uh, but the basic idea is that all of the logic has it been in comp encapsulated in this launch Jupyter server dot sbatch script. And you can launch your Jupyter server with the default user interface being Jupyter lab with the single command here, just sbatch and then this particular script. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that command just to get it, run, just to get it started. And then we will walk through um, the different pieces of the scripts and the process um, uh, in just a minute. So I'm going to go back over here, and so from the project root directory, I'm going to sbatch bin and launch Jupyter server sbatch. Okay, cool. So we've submitted that job. So once that job starts running, then we'll have to do two things. So the first is that we're going to need to create an SSH tunnel between our local machine and the compute node on IBEX on which our... Um, um, our uh, Jupyter server is running, okay? So a, the command to create this SSH tunnel is going to look uh, something like this here. The exact command is going to be, uh, we can copy the exact command from our um, slurm.error file, which will have been created for the job that we just launched. And then once we've created that SSH tunnel, then we can launch our, uh, or we can access our Jupyter server running on IBEX by simply pasting a particular URL um, into our browser window on our local machine. And the exact structure of that URL will also be in that same um, launch uh, Jupyter server with your Slurm job ID, slurm.air file. Okay. So, Let's take a look at that file. So if we were to cat out the output from the bin directory 
launch Jupyter server, then our job ID error. Then we can look in here and see, so here is the command that you need to copy to create the, um, the SSH tunnel between your local machine and a particular G node, in this case, GPU 510-32 and a particular port. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna copy that command and then you can just create a new terminal window, paste it, and then that's it. So when you paste that command, you hit enter and it will automatically connect. You may be asked for your password, so you have to type in your password and hit enter if you're not using SSH keys. Um, I'll just go ahead and minimize that because once you've created that SSH connection, you can just ignore that other. Uh, um, and then if you go down at the bottom, you'll see this URL, which contains the port, in this case, 12081, and um, a unique access token. And this access token is something that's generated by the Jupyter server. It's unique to your instance of your Jupyter server. And unless you have this access token, even if you were to stumble across the port where your Jupyter server was running, um, you would not be able to access it without the token. So please don't share your tokens with other users unless you want those users to have kind of unfettered access to your Jupyter server running on Ibex. Okay, so if you copy that and then paste it into a browser, Then after a few seconds, voila, there you are. You have a Jupyter Lab server that's running on Ibex. Um, you can now do any development work, work that you wish to do. You can create notebooks. You can create Python, IPython consoles. You can create terminal windows, which you can then use to launch batch jobs um, on Ibex. How's up? We're done. Um, so in a follow-on video, I will show you um, how to you know, develop a training script and launch a training job um, as a batch job on Ibex. But first, I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to launch a Jupyter Lab um, running on compute nodes, um, in this case with access to GPU. So if we were to open a terminal window um, and we were to run NVIDIA SMI, you'll see that we have access to a single uh, V100 GPU. Okay. okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this, um, this Jupyter server. Uh, so I'll do file and shut down, shut down. Okay, and now that will cleanly exit the job that we launched. So if we go back here and we do uh, we'll see that we no longer have any jobs running. Okay, so that's it. So that's the basic process of launching a Jupyter server. So now, um, if you're interested, I'm gonna cover the, the lower level details of how these Jupyter, uh, how these um, launch scripts work, uh, just in case you're curious. So at this point, you know, if you're not interested in the details, you can, you know, cut to a different training video. Okay. So let's take a look at the Jupyter server sbatch script. So this is the script that we actually launched um, with our sbatch command. So there are a few things in here. So first, we are asking for uh, two hours of time on the debug partition. So the debug part partition is a great place uh, to do, you know, short bursts of, of interactive computing work. So two hours or less, uh, two hours is the time limit on the debug partition. The debug partition does have GPUs. Uh, it does have V100 GPUs. It has a couple of them, um, you know, not a huge amount, um, but it does have uh, a few V100 GPUs available. So in this case, I have actually asked for um, a single node, a single V100 GPU on that node, six CPUs per GPU, and uh, 64 gigs of CPU memory to go along with the 32 gigs of GPU memory that will uh, that we have with our V100 GPU. I've also set a constraint for Intel, 
Now, if you have viewed the previous video, you recall that we built a, um, a uh, Conda environment that was optimized not just for NVIDIA GPUs, but also for Intel CPUs. Now, at the time of making this video, this constraint is, um, is, um, is not entirely necessary because all of our GPUs are installed on Intel CPU nodes. So anytime you ask for a GPU, you're automatically going to end up on an Intel node um, in any case. Um, but I like to be very explicit with my Slurm scripts so that I know exactly what it is, what resources I'm requesting. So I've gone ahead and left this constraint, uh, this constraint in here. Um, the six CPUs per GPU. So six is the um, the uh, fair share amount of CPUs per GPU for our uh, V100 nodes. So each of our V100 nodes has uh, typically eight V100s and 48 CPUs. So uh, 48 divided by eight is about six CPUs per GPU. So I tend to ask for six CPUs per GPU. Um, with memory, I tend to ask at, for a minimum of two times the the GPU memory. So when I'm working with V100s, I'll ask for at least 64 gigs of memory. Um, the most I would ask for is um, 90 gigs of memory per GPU, or 92 gigs of memory per GPU. Um, and again, that's the kind of proportional fair share amount of memory available on the node per GPU. Um, and that will help um, keep job throughput high on IBEX if everyone is requesting these kind of fair share of proportional resources. Um, but in any case, this is quite a lot of, of resources for interactive work. And again, on the debug partition, you can ask for up to two hours. Uh, if you want more than that, then you'll have to launch on the actual batch partition. Um, but at least in my case, I tend to always launch on the debug partition because two hours is about as much time as I can, you know, work in a focused way, and then I'm ready for a break. So I'll log out, I'll start a new job later. Um, okay, so this sbatch script actually just wraps a uh, bin slash launch Jupyter server s run script. And the reason that I have set the scripts up this way is I need to make sure that there's not going to be any contention for the ports on which um, the Jupyter servers are running. So by default, a Jupyter server will run on port 8888. But on a shared system like IBEX, if everyone tries to launch their, their Jupyter servers on that port, there's going to be contention and there will be um, race conditions and errors and things like that. So I find it um, better to use srun from within an sbatch script so that I can reserve a port via Slurm and give that unique port where there's no one currently uh, using that port to the Jupyter server. So now if we were to go and look at that ju launch Jupyter server .s run script, you'll see that in this s run script, um, I set up the conda environment. Okay. And if you remember, it's important when you ever you need to use a conda activate command in your script, uh, you need to make sure that that script is running in a login shell. And uh, so you just put this bin bash login at the top of your script, and that will enable the conda activate command in that script. And then the rest of this is just basically collecting the information that you need to set up the port forwarding command, um, and then actually launch the Jupyter server itself on the compute node. Okay. Um, so again, I think that's it. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video is how to launch the Jupyter server, um, which I did. And then I've given you a bit of the details as to how that, um, how that works and, um, and whatnot, in case you have other um, web browser-based applications that are similar to the Jupyter server that you would like to launch on IBEX, you can use, re you could reuse a lot of these same ideas to, to make that happen. Um, in a follow-on video, I will explain how to launch a PyTorch training job. Um, we'll prototype it um, interactively using the Jupyter Lab uh, environment. And then I'll show you once we have it prototyped and, and running and we're, we're confident that it's performing well, I'll show you how to then 
go ahead and launch that job as a batch job on IBEX asking for more resources. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks, bye.